Hi, I'm Lynn Clark, and some of you may know me from my Code Cartoons. I wanted to share with you today a special Code Cartoons presentation about the future of WebAssembly at Fastly, just for you, the Altitude audience. If you aren't familiar with WebAssembly, it's what makes the Fastly Compute platform possible. With Fastly Compute, you can run your own code at the edge, efficiently auto-scaling as the requests per second go up and down. And this code can be written in a variety of languages. We officially support JavaScript, Go, and Rust, but you can easily bring your own language to compute if you want to use something else. Once you're building a compute service, regardless of the source language that you wrote it in, we turn it into WebAssembly to run it on our platform. This has been true since the beginning of compute. We do this because WebAssembly gives us fantastic security. It provides very fine-grained isolation for your code, but it also has incredibly fast startup times. We start running your code in microseconds, and it can support so many different languages. Fastly started with WebAssembly at the core of its compute offering because Fastly knew WebAssembly was going to be the future of how we build software for the cloud, for the edge, and beyond. Fastly knew that WebAssembly was going to unlock much better collaboration, much faster and more seamless collaboration between teams, even if those teams work in different source languages. Developers would get all of the benefits of microservices without the hassles of them. But if you already had an existing microservice architecture, you'd be able to seamlessly integrate this new WebAssembly architecture in with that. And Fastly knew that all of this together would make our customers time to launch so much faster and get experiences in users' hands faster. Fastly knew that with applications built this way, it would be easy to move them around to different platforms. For example, moving parts of the application from the centralized cloud to the edge. And that would make it easier for developers to optimize the code so that users had fast, responsive experiences. And Fastly knew that the resulting applications would be so much more secure that our customers would be able to rest easy knowing that their users were so much safer. So Fastly saw WebAssembly's potential early, and Fastly has been a pioneer in proving out this architecture. Back then, I and many of the people on my team were at Mozilla. We were the ones who had started WebAssembly in the first place, and we were building out the ecosystem. We were so focused on the browser, we hadn't foreseen how WebAssembly could transform the way we build software more generally. But seeing what Tyler and his team were doing with WebAssembly helped us see the potential. It helped us realize that the same problems that we were solving for in the browser were plaguing the rest of the industry. You see, browsers had normalized downloading code from random people on the internet and running it on your computer, which, let's just be clear, is wildly reckless. But at least with 20 years of engineering and millions of engineer hours of work, we'd developed pretty solid sandboxing in browsers that could keep the machine safe. But the genie was out of the bottle as far as running untrusted code goes, and ecosystems like NPM had picked up on this idea. Being able to collaborate in this way was just so useful. It made it so much easier to build applications and to build more feature-rich applications quickly. So as an industry, we decided to accept this massive risk. We decided to pull in source code from strangers as part of our collaboration workflows, even when we didn't have a sandbox to depend on. You only live once, right? Seeing Tyler demonstrate how they were using WebAssembly outside the browser to put a lightweight sandbox around this untrusted code that they were running in compute helped us realize we could solve a pretty massive problem with WebAssembly. That inspired us to take on this much bigger challenge, to make a WebAssembly ecosystem that was easily composable, like the NPM ecosystem and the PyPy ecosystem or the Cargo ecosystem. But this ecosystem wouldn't be limited to a single language. We'd be able to combine languages, and more importantly, it wouldn't give up the sandbox that kept our users safe. We would bring the sandbox with us. So we started building out the next evolution of the WebAssembly ecosystem, kicking it off with standardizing interfaces for hosts with WASI. Fastly helped us see the potential that WebAssembly had, and we weren't the only ones. 
Here's Solomon Heights, the creator of Docker, saying that if WebAssembly and WASI had been around in 2008, he wouldn't have needed to create Docker and kick off the evolution of the whole container ecosystem. This potential is why we at Mozilla partnered with Fastly to create the Bytecode Alliance, along with Microsoft and Intel. And it's why so many partners have joined us in the Bytecode Alliance, from Amazon and Shopify to ARM and Docker and Nginx. And it's also why we, as the team who had created and shepherded WebAssembly forward from its earliest days, decided to move together to Fastly. This is all why I'm so excited to be speaking to you today at Fastly's Altitude Conference about how all of this potential that we've been working on for the past decade is coming to fruition. Because 2024 is going to be when WebAssembly takes it to the next level. In 2024, we're going to be introducing support for the component model. With the component model, you'll have this kind of Lego block model of building up your applications, like you do with those ecosystems I mentioned earlier, NPM and PyPy and Cargo. But in contrast with those ecosystems, as I mentioned before, each component can be written in a different language and has its own sandbox surrounding it, so that malicious or vulnerable code doesn't have access to the security critical parts of your application. But this is all still super fast. The communication between these components is faster than HTTP, even faster than IPC. It's almost as fast as a regular function call. And this is all in service of simplification, making it simpler and easier for you, our customers, to build applications. Let's take a look at what this looks like more concretely. It looks like seamless collaboration across your development teams, no matter what languages they're working in. Do you have a team that works in JavaScript and another that works in Rust? With components, they can simply export functions to each other and import them, just as if they were working in the same language. It looks like no more service chaining headaches. Instead of service chaining multiple services together using HTTP, just use multiple components in one service. You get the isolation and language independence of different services, but the developer experience and performance of deploying a single application in a single service. It looks like sleeping easier at night, knowing that your application is protected, knowing that even if you have mistakenly deployed some malicious component or there's a zero day exploit, that code can't get to the important security critical parts of your application. It looks like knowing that you've limited the blast radius and kept your data and your users safe. And this is just a taste of what the component model can do. We are so excited for how the component model is going to transform the way that we build applications. And we can't wait to bring it all to you on Fastly's compute platform next year. Thank you. And back to you in New York. Thank you.